suppose that it's not a question of if, but when. This new Rose turret is a big improvement in every way from the previous Quad 303s, but they do jam a lot. It's also great that if you do have to bail, there's no Perspex bubble to stop you, just a step into the dark infinity. If you are still alive to do so, of course. Which is dubious, to say the least. The Messerschmitts know to creep up low and behind to kill the rear gunner at first step. The life expectancy of a new rear gunner is only two weeks. It's a strange place to find myself. Ten weeks ago, I was finishing up my second year at Cambridge, studying for a first in philosophy. Now, here I am, with three weeks of nighttime raids under my belt. I keep my eyes peeled and try to keep the crew safe, but we all know our chances of making it out are pretty low. I have resigned myself to death. I just hope it happens quick and painless. I volunteered for the Air Force. I couldn't stand by and let the Nazis win. Could I? But my dad tried to talk me out of it and warned about the dangers of flying. He flew a sop with camel in the last show, so he knows a thing or two about danger. I wanted to be a fighter pilot, but rear gunners are what they really needed. As Nietzsche says, he who fights with monsters must take care lest he thereby becomes a monster himself. And if you stare into the abyss, sometimes the abyss stares back. I know what he means. Staring out at that darkness, looking for those night fighters, it's hard not to wonder about everything. Why are we here? What makes it right to kill civilians with our bombs? What did they ever do to us? If I could drop a bomb on Hitler and his high command, I wouldn't even give it a second thought. But this destruction of cities filled with people, children, dogs, it makes me feel like a murderer. So, so my death would be like executing a criminal. Only just deserts, wouldn't it? I spent six months in my second term studying in Germany on an exchange. It was before all this madness. I liked the people I stayed with and they welcomed me. They treated me like family. Shakespeare said, nothing is either good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. I think this bombing is bad, but I want to win the war. It's a beautiful dichotomy. One thing I do know for sure, is that I will give everything to try and keep my crew alive. That is my job. Yes, sir. Yes. 
You were lucky you landed in the snow and slid, or you would be dead, Mr. Englisher Flyer. Aha! You are awake at last. You need food and water to recover your strength. Where, where am I? Ah, you have had a major trauma. You have been in a coma for three days. We did not think you could survive. But I see you are strong. I lost a bet here with Heidi. You, you are, you are German. Yeah, I'm a doctor of medicine and philosophy. This is my daughter Heidi. What should we call you? I don't understand. Am I not dead? I jumped with no parachute from 20,000 feet. That is impossible to survive.
Where am I? You are in my father's house. This is... Germany. Yes. How... How did I get here? Well, you were brought here by a shepherd in his cart. He found you in the upper pasture. I don't... I don't understand. I remember jumping. Nothing else. Your lucky day, perhaps? Won't you... Won't you get in trouble? No. As the authorities, they know that you are here, but... You were almost dead when you were brought in, and so we said we could see if we could patch you up and that moving you would probably be fatal. It was clear you were not going anywhere anytime soon. But why? Why care for me? I've been dropping bombs on Germany for months. I, I'm your enemy. And we are Christians. And Jesus told that wonderful parable about is a good Samaritan. He also said, love your enemies. Should we ignore that clear teaching just because there is another ridiculous war happening? I don't, I don't deserve your kindness. Yes, come now. Did you have any choice in your call to arms? Yes. No. Your, your, your leader is intent on dominating the, the world and Eliminating the Jews. Your Jesus was a Jew. Tutor in Cambridge says the Nazis have perverted Nietzsche's philosophy for their own ends. I am not sure. Ah. We tread on dangerous ground. His nihilism was based more on a search for purity of thought, without the waffling and sentimentality. But I would like to point out his wife rewrote one of his unpublished manuscripts under his name as a basis for Nazi propaganda. However, Nietzsche had a valid point. That God, as an image of a compassionate, an individually caring bearded white man sitting omnipotent on a throne of clouds, as depicted by Michelangelo, is obviously a misrepresentation. Misrepresentation? No one knows what God is or his purpose. I feel that God is, is infinite and hugely complex. Not being, but more of a sentient system. God is the wellspring of life and beyond our, our depiction or understanding. We can only improve the quality of our speculation, but never really know anything about the real motivation and input of the great mechanic and architect. However, I think Nietzsche and I probably agree. One must be logical, observant, and hopeful to find the true meaning of life. I believe that our our existence is to find purpose and value in this, this situation we call existence without self-deception or giving in to easy popular beliefs or superstitions. You know, all that, all that mumbling and, and circumspection. To say God is dead leaves a huge void in the moral compass. It opens the door to a Nazi philosophy of discrimination and rejection of all compassion and mercy. Does that not lead us to a new set of self-serving assumptions about destiny that, and I guess, and purity that have directly led to this terrible war? Nietzsche has shown us the void, the, this abyss that he refers to. Nazism is about telling even bigger lies and forming even more destructive ambitions. Everyone lies, George. Mostly to themselves. I know I do. The bigger, the more outrageous the lie, the more it becomes supportive propaganda that the destructive, darker side of human nature is morally equivalent to other views. 
this vicious propaganda, the despicable and blatant lie is repeated and spread until it is as acceptable as light of reason. It undermines the goals of equality and justice and the more creative, positive views we believe are humane and respectful to the individual. It is the destruction and vilification of the more positive views of tolerance, kindness, love that Jesus, Buddha, and Muhammad promoted. What people have chosen to believe in the past have also been very self-serving deceptions. They have included discrimination, power struggles, and political maneuvering. Jesus found a path of clarity through the chaos. He rebelled against the, the representations and cultural limitations found in the Torah. He saw they were either impractical or misogynistic or both. I believe he concluded they were not God's will. For me, the Ten Commandments are the perfect guidebook. The recipes are simple and practical. Jesus talks about on the, on the Sermon on the Mount. He brings the theoretical into practice in your everyday life. He creates new expectations. To be a Christian is not tyranny, George. It's an escape from tyranny, or it should be. Unfortunately, the New Testament is an often ignored and easily misquoted guidebook. The real problem, George, is the common beliefs leave room for bigger lies and deceptions based on what are claimed to be holy texts or the word of God and incontrovertible. I'm a Christian, George, but that does not make me lay down my intellect or deny the obvious conclusion that some of the representations of Jesus are not very accurate. Everyone and every thing in this world is at least slightly imperfect. I believe that is part of the great design. The sum of our imperfections leads to perfection. But perfection is the, the holy grail that we seek and we could not comprehend if we found it. Dieter, you have overwhelmed my mind. I need to stop and think about everything. I am not an atheist. I feel like I have Christian ideals, and yet I'm killing innocent people on a daily basis. It's burning me up inside. I do not fear death. I have come to embrace it. I fear judgment. You are looking better every day. My body is improving, but I am more confused than ever. I cannot understand how I am still alive. I, I fell from a doomed aircraft with no parachute. It seems surreal. It, is this real? As real as we ever experience in this life, I think. <laughs> Amidst the mundane realities, we populate our lives with manufactured truths. And these are the things we wish were true, and that causes them to be true. I can see you've been talking with your father too much. It overwhelms my mind. Uh, I've only been here a couple weeks. It seems longer, somehow. Well, my father likes to have an intellectual sparring partner. I hope he is not bearing you out. Um, <laughs> by the way, you have become quite the celebrity in Germany. Well, someone who has survived a fall from an airplane is very rare, as you can imagine. There has been much speculation about what such a strange event can possibly mean. It, it transcends the obvious facts that you are an enemy combatant. Many say that you must have a special purpose or a divine destiny. That makes no sense. Well, I think the German people are desperate for a miracle, and... As unlikely as you think it might be, you are it. You have risen from the dead. That is still a big story. I don't have anything to give anyone. I am empty, confused, 
I am no messiah. <laughs> I can teach people how to be confused. That is probably my only skill. Well, don't you see? Your unwillingness, your emptiness, it can only be a predecessor for a new sense of purpose. You will be bursting with a new vision. Be patient. Heidi, your confidence in me is misplaced. But I appreciate the kind words and all the care that you have lavished on me over the past weeks. I am eternally in your debt. I have a feeling that you are a great investment that will pay off big dividends soon. Be patient. George, is there is something I must tell you? It is what oh, strange news. What? What's happening? You know how I said that your survival has been seen as a miracle, an omen of new possibility? Yes, but I am no messenger or angel, I can promise you that. <laughs> well, the Fuhrer has heard about you, and his astrologer has persuaded him to come and see you. As you will know, the war has not been going well for Germany as of late, and I suspect he may be grasping at straws, but he is impulsive, and he is still, he is still very dangerous. You have no choice. You must see him. He will be here this afternoon at two o'clock. This, this is a nightmare. You must understand that things could go badly for my father if you displease Adolf Hitler. Uh, please, do what you can to engage him, and if you can think of any great ideas to stop this madness, consider them deeply. Hitler is not a man who takes the advice of anyone, but he does respond to signs. He has the power of life and death over us and many other people in the world. I don't have the first idea of what we're going to talk about. Dieter said you were a philosopher. What do you make of all this then? I can't believe I'm here talking to you, Albert Einstein. It seems preposterous that just a little while back I stepped out of a doomed aircraft and fell. This seems impossible. Surreal. But look around. Isn't everything you see extremely unlikely? That it is all comprised of atomic particles, just tiny little energy bricks that build everything in their beautiful and apparently solid reality, including us. I have a deep sense of wonder about everything. I feel like I understand nothing anymore. I expected to die. In fact, I was already dead. It was the only way to acknowledge the surreal circumstances I was in. But tell me, how did you come here? I thought you were in America. Surely it's perilous for you to be here at this moment. Dieter and I have been friends since university. We were like brothers. I have come because it is essential that I meet secretly with some like-minded friends here to see if there's any way we can change this never-ending slaughter and demeaning of the German soul. The Zeitgeist which is being prostituted in the name of Hitler's arrogance and fatal ambition. If we cannot succeed, I am mortally afraid of the potential consequences of a disastrous apocalypse that will destroy Europe and will have been the unwitting and dreadful consequence of my research. I, I do not want to be the author of destruction and death of anyone, least of all the German people. I have to use whatever influence I have to stop this amagan 
before it is too late for all of us. I still have friends left in the Prussian Academy. They must be warned. I was always a pacifist before the war. But now I realize one cannot stand on the sidelines while the whole world is destroyed. I am committed to stop this Nazism by any means possible. Sir, did Dieter tell you that Hitler will be here this afternoon? He will be surrounded by SS guards. Surely it's dangerous for you. You, you, you must leave now. We have several hours before that man-man arrives. But I will leave shortly. Tell me, I am very interested in one part of your experience. When you jumped out of that plane, were you frightened or relieved? What did you think? Did your perception of time change at that fateful moment? I don't remember. It seems like a dream now. That there was a moment of visual distortion, like a stuttering, I think, like, like a film moving one frame at a time. I was working on instinct. Perhaps my reason was buried in some sort of terror. Sir, I don't know. I feel tired just thinking about it. I will go now. Be cautious in what you say to Hitler. He is mercurial and can change from charm to inconsistent rage instantly if he feels criticized or demeaned. I fear he is truly deranged at this time. He may appear to be urbane, rational, even reasonable, but I must warn you, he is the devil incarnate. Ask me why? Why I have followed the course of my destiny? Why well, it has been a chess game of pawns and, and bold gambits. Some have made sacrifices. Some have been chosen for a role that is unpleasant. Some have died. But tell me, Mr. Eagles, what is more important, the survival of an individual or the health and success of the collective state of Europe, and in time, the entire world. I, I believe that at times, one must sacrifice themselves for the greater good of their country and the generations that follow. In, in my turret, on each raid, my death was uh, imminent, visceral. I had no illusions of being a hero. I wanted to live a full life, to have children and grandchildren, but that wasn't for me. I accepted that. Yes, but I say the heroes are not the valiant warriors, but instead the ordinary people who recognize that uh, one person's life counts for little in the grand scheme of things. The, the Germans that I knew when I studied here were normal, uh, thoughtful people. I cannot imagine they would welcome a aggressive war for German domination. I cannot understand how you or your Nazi party changed people's minds in such a short time. But most of all, again, I don't understand why. Oh, the Allies for the cause of this war? In 1919, after the madness of the Great War, they imposed the most onerous limitations on Germany in the peace terms that were forced upon us. Those terms treated Germany like a, a, a bunch of unruly children. It caused a massive reflex reaction within Germany, a new sense of outraged pride. 
We all wanted to make Germany great again. To reclaim our proud history and sense of being masters of our destiny. But nation does not want that. That was the unifying initiative and a political opportunity that I could not ignore. So you, what, decided to teach the Allies a lesson? I decided that it is better to strive, but not to fight for a greater unifying vision than bow to arbitrary measures. I decided that we needed to regain our pride and courage and we would not submit to pariah status. I had a slogan that was hugely impactful in our electoral success. Make Germany great again. Once you decide to tell people what they inherently need to hear, you have already won. Tell me, are you familiar with Shakespeare's King Lear? I am. I have seen it a couple times. It's about not dividing your kingdom. It leads to internal strife and conflict. Did you know that Shakespeare wrote that play for King James as a tribute to the Basilicon Doron, a political treatise that King James had written before ascending the English throne and uniting England and Scotland? That one concept has driven me, a united country, or even better, a united world with a common purpose, not a series of squabbling fiefdoms, not the practical mumbo-jumbo of a stifling state control practiced by the communists. Well, we are talking about a unified country of Europe, displacing the self-serving classes, anachronistic kings, queens, lords, and ladies with a truly efficient and rational government. Imagine one country of Europe as a beacon of light in the darkness of the world. A new economic world order based on the ingenuity, hard work, and professionalism that is a hallmark of the German people. The workers, the great musicians, the art and architecture, and yes, when necessary, weapons of war. A desire for perfection is a holy and magnificent thing. And I suppose you want to be the leader of that country? No, 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 no. Once the vision is completed, I will hand over the reins to competent and practical people. I am a dreamer who sees how something may be accomplished and accepts the responsibility for the price that must be paid. I would argue that the Jews have paid the biggest price. <laughs> if there were no Jews, I would have had to invent some other group to, to focus the rage and intolerance of the less intelligent, the stupid people. The Jews were a convenient and historic target. Yeah, well, it could have been something crazy, like a, like a building a wall around Germany, for example. Just a distraction that unified and manipulated the prejudice of the common people. The Jews were a soft target that already historically had attracted a good share of natural resentment and animosity worldwide. That is a substantial amount of focused energy that we could employ. Did you know that in the year 1290, all Jews were expelled from England? Germans did not invent anti-Jewish sentiment. It is at least equally or predominantly a British invention. But so much violence and cruelty, was it really necessary to meet your goals? Why are you creating all this destruction and bloodshed? You have a saying, I believe, that to make omelets, <laughs> you must break eggs. You have been dropping bombs on civilian targets. How do you feel? Is there not some moral equivalence? 
Did you want to do it? Well, of course not, but you did it anyway. Yes, you felt it was your duty. I would point out that our occupation of Europe was, was highly efficient and not that violent in the total scheme of history. When you rid the world of inefficiencies, stupidity and corruption of the current systems of government, we will have accomplished something of such incredible importance that even the Jews will benefit in the longer term. <laughs> Imagine an efficient, productive, and well-ordered European state with a fair justice system, a strong family-based morality, and a wonderful respect for nurturing children. A place of invention and modern capabilities. No room for inherited power of unearned wealth. No new productive, efficient, and perfect state that would almost run itself. A meritocracy. That is our vision. Everything else is just facilitation tactics. I, I just, I can't, I cannot agree with you that, that the ends justify the means. You are young and naive. Well, I was that way once. That was before I suffered with the other young people of my generation in the trenches year after year and for what? Humiliation and economic ruin. I decided to create a utopian and pragmatic future where such balls for such ridiculous causes would never occur again. When you are calloused by the way of the world, you will understand that half measures are ineffectual. To lead, to find and develop a promised land, you must be bold. Fulfilling your God-given destiny is a devout way to accept God's will. I could have successfully invaded Britain at the beginning of the war, but I stopped at Calais, within one day's striking distance of London. People say I dithered, but I did not. We were always negotiating with those in England, including your King Edward and, and many others in powerful positions who could see the, the, the common sense and value of our ideas. For I like and admire the British, why, why they are almost German in their capabilities and ambitions. Well, we were expecting an invitation to join the Imperial might of Britain with the amazing and, and exhilarating capabilities of the German people. But in the end, your idiotic Prime Minister Winston Churchill spade sufficient numbers of the foolish and weak to reject our generous partnership terms. That was a fatal and world-changing mistake. Sail into the sunset, friend, far beyond the outer reef, outside the cross job and confusion to the lovely ocean. Play behind your wake, mermaids gather at your bow, a strong clear wind fills up your sails, no shoals ahead, one course to take.
Yeah. 